to another edition of Lab Rats. So exciting. I'm Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And we're the dan dancing downloadable fools. Emphasis on fool. This is uh, technology made simple and slightly funny because of his haircut. No, really. Look at this guy. My haircut, too. I actually spiked it specially for this episode. Do you know that? Yeah, that is pretty special. <laughs> anyway, today on the show, we're going to um, help you save your data. Make sure you don't leave, lose all those pictures of your grandma's 100th birthday, uh, of the birth of your child, of the, your dog crapping on your lawn, things like that. All of those MP3s that the record industry made you pay a lot of money for. Right. This is called the backup episode. I'm going to show you sort of some common ways to back up your machine using Windows Vista some hardware solutions, and also software on the Mac. On the Mac? We're going to show the Mac, too, just, just to humor you Apple people. All right. They're a humorous bunch. <laughs> All right. Let's take a look at a message from our sponsor. We'll be right back with Backup. This is a pair of sneakers. They're worn and comfy. This is a Jack Russell Terrier. It likes shoes. This is Camtasia Studio 4. It can edit your screencasts. Now answer our trivia question. What screencast editor can be left unsupervised and doesn't smell like feet? I'll be back at the end of the show with the answer. It's the most exciting uh, topic we could ever possibly do. I'm thrilled People by this. Gather around everybody because we're going to show you how to back up your data. And you know, I know a guy who uh, almost lost all of his wedding photos. Mm -hmm. And I think he, there was a temptation. He thought he was going to be sleeping on the couch forever. So this is something that everybody hates to do and something that everybody should do and most people don't do. Yeah, and it's, then it's too late. not an exciting topic, potentially, no. but you know, it's, it's a very necessary one. And we keep telling people, back up, back up, back up. And even though we keep telling that, sometimes we don't even do it ourselves. You know, do you back up? I do. I do back up. Ask me days. if I back up. Do you back up? Mm, no. Not so no. Much. Not so much. Yeah, man, I, I my, my emails I back up. I don't back up as regularly as I should, and I know that when I've got a problem on the machine, and I'm like, oh, no. And then, thankfully, I've pulled through a couple times, but I'm not always going to be that lucky, and you're not going to be that lucky either. So we should probably tell them a few ways that they can back up their machine quickly and painlessly. Let's start with, uh, I think, hardware solutions first, mm -hmm. the kinds of things that you're going to encounter. Of course, you know, you know, these days, hard drives are enormous, right? I mean, you're talking about mm -hmm. a quarter or half a terabyte drives. Right. Uh, laptops are even enormous. You know, they're 160 uh, gigs these days. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to get anything under, what, 120, I suppose. So that's a lot of data, and you know when you're pulling you know large multimedia files off, you're a big music collector, or uh, you know you have lots of movies or something on your system. You're talking about gigabytes and gigabytes of data. So yeah. let's talk about so the hardware uh, side of things, and we'll get to what software you use to actually mm -hmm. push it all to that hardware. So our options. Uh, what are you, what's your favorite backup hardware option? My favorite is just another hard drive. Yeah, like now, this, right? Yeah, like this. Hard drives, unfortunately, they fail, but they, you know, they they fail. All or nothing. So as yes. long as it's working, you're probably going to be good. So I've got a. Uh, I'll just hold this steady for our our uh, camera guy, Maurice. So this right here is a um, an enclosure that I bought, and I put a, a notebook size hard drive in it. Right. It's it's a little bit more expensive to use a notebook size hard drive to do this, but it's nice and compact. So if you're traveling a lot, this might be a great choice. But uh, you can just as easily do this with a full-size enclosure or a full-size drive that you buy from the store. That right, has absolutely. 500 gigabytes on it for you know 250. I know it's just crazy. Dollars. So cheap, cheap, cheap technology. Right. Um, you know, as you said, it's a, a terabyte. I think I saw it the other day for a half a terabyte. It was like 200 bucks mm -hmm. US or something. I got 250 something right. in there. Very, very affordable. So a hard drive, old, reliable, lots of space, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Yeah. The nice thing about a hard drive is. Uh, you just plug it in, it shows up as another drive on your system, in theory, if it's set up properly. And uh, you just drag the files that you want to save over to the other drive. Right, good. Um, option number two is, uh, you know, and this is for the smaller backups, but uh, I would highly recommend, you know, you keep a fairly large USB key with you. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is the new floppy, right? You know, mm -hmm. The floppy drives went away a few years ago, and these little guys are flash memory, actually. Mm -hmm. And you plug this in. I'm sure everybody out there has one. If they don't, they're going to get one real soon. They go up to in size to a, about, I think it's eight. 
gigabytes now. Yeah, for flash, for, uh, flash for sure. Um, I've actually got a, a pair of mini hard drives uh, that go up to 12 gigabytes, and that's yeah. going to keep going up. It's and going up to keep going up as we go forward. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, you know, not a great solution for uh, enormous amounts of multimedia files. No. You imagine, you know, one gig is going to sort of store all your perhaps your essays or mm -hmm. your. Uh, your letters um, or hmm. and that sort of thing. If you're using something like Microsoft Word, which pads out those files sure to a certain extent. Sure enough. But, but no, yeah, you can not great save for... the important documents on yeah. this. If you've got a bunch of business documents that you need to back up for sure, you can do it onto something like that. Right. Now, the, uh, another technology that I, I'm, I blow hot and cold on this, and that's you know, optical media, right? Mm -hmm. So our DVDs. Mm -hmm. There you go, Mo. Uh, we all know that has 4.7 uh, gigabytes of data on the single-sided, uh, mm -hmm. single layer, I should say, of DVDs, and then of course the you know CD, which is mm -hmm. smaller, 800, seven or 800, I think it's 700 on average mm -hmm. megabytes of storage on these two guys. Right. Now, to do this, of course, you'll need to use probably you know your burner and be built into your uh, to your machine. Most people have them these days. Uh, problem with that is you know you, if you back up an 80 gigabyte hard drive, mm -hmm. you know how many how many DVDs is that? It's a right. lot of DVDs. Now, it, it should be mentioned that uh, there are HD, DVD, and Blu-ray drives that are now writable. They're very expensive still at this point, so they're yeah. very much a specialty kind of application. So you can maybe get 50 gigabytes of data onto one of these things. That's right. So you may have to still go through two or three. So you're gonna, the, the real big downside of that is you have to pick and choose what you're going to put on those and sort of sort through those. Um, and um, so that's, I guess, more or less. I mean, you can also, this. we talked about networks. Uh, um, Network storage mm -hmm. before you could back up on your network to another machine. I uh, I like that idea. It mm -hmm. just tends to be network is a bit finicky. It's difficult mm -hmm. to set up and that sort of thing. Yeah. There are a new generation of network uh, storage devices mm -hmm. coming on the market. Linksys has got a very good one. Mm -hmm. That said, you kind of have to be pretty advanced to get them to work properly. Yeah, no, th there are a few out there that I've looked at in the past from uh, Seagate Mac Store, and mm -hmm. uh, apparently HP has some new ones coming out as well. Uh, they tend to be a little bit slower than mm -hmm. the connection that you get to a hard drive connected right to your machine because you're limited to well, the bandwidth to, of the network, right? The bandwidth yeah. of the network. Yeah. So if you've got a gigabit network, then you're doing a little bit better, but that still doesn't compare to to actual hard drive write speeds. But the beautiful thing about that is, you know, you could use an entirely other machine mm -hmm. or you know, separate hard drive connected to the network, and it's always there. Right. You know, it's a beautiful solution. It's easy, at least from that perspective. Mm -hmm. Network, notwithstanding. Um, so let's look at solutions. Uh, one of the things that impressed me about Vista is the whole suite of backup solutions that come with that now. Mm -hmm. And let's start with uh, basically the built-in functionality. I'm going to go down here um, to uh, my Windows button, and I'm going to type in backup. And you'll notice there's actually a whole new utility called uh, the backup status and configuration uh, tool, aka the backup utility. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that you can set up an automatic file backup with this by clicking on the uh, file backup. Um, and what it does, it'll just sort of walk you through a regular backup. And the nice thing about once this is backed up initially, uh, it does incremental backups. So every time you add new data, it'll back that up. And it's an ongoing thing. Mm -hmm. And it'll also schedule at times when you're not using the machine. So again, here I have a choice of the removable you know, disk on either a CD, a hard drive, or a DVD burner. Um, and it will actually walk me through. If it's an optical disk, it'll actually give me multiple choices, you know, CD1, CD2, or DVD1, DVD2. Right. And of course, there's an option here for on a network, for the network uh, drive, perhaps, or a, another machine that you would want to back up on. Right. So you okay. would click on the network and then surf to that machine or remote folder that you want to back up into. Absolutely. I'm going to click on Next here. Uh, and what's great, great about this is inside of the, the, the Windows Vista, at the C level, at the uh, root level, there is a folder called Users. And inside mm -hmm. of that is, for example, you know, if it was my desktop, it would be Andy. Or you know, if it was your desktop, it would be Sean, slash Sean. And then you get your desktop, and you get your Documents folder and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You can then pick and choose the types of data that you're going to back up. Uh, in this list, you see pictures, music, video, email, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to click Next there. I'm going to choose how often, whether it's weekly, daily, or monthly and what day, and I can choose the time as well. And then I'm going to save it, and it's going to go through a routine, configure up the back, back up, find the drive, and start to either burn that, uh, or, uh, and you know, obviously, preferably, if you're using an external hard drive, it'll mm -hmm. just do that without having you to get be there to actually use the optical disk to insert new versions and that sort of thing. Right. So when it's uh, doing this backup process through this, is it backing up the entirety of the operating system and everything, or is it just backing up just the data that you've added on on top of this? Uh, what it's doing, no, so it doesn't back up the system files. It's all mm -hmm. basically your user data, anything that you've generated. Okay. Um, but so it won't back up Windows per se. The idea is, in the event that there's a problem and Windows gets decimated by a virus, for mm -hmm. example, you just uh, reinstall Windows. 
you reinstall Windows, and then you basically put your backup on this. Now, the problem is it's a little slow. Mm -hmm. um, I can't say it's a, it's a, but I so said once you get going and the incre incremental backup starts up, it's fine. Mm -hmm. This is available in uh, Home Premium. Uh, it's available in the business version and also, um, of course, Ultimate, which is the all feature version of, of Vista. Right. So thank you, Microsoft, for installing, uh, for adding that to Vista. I think that's a, that's a really good addition. It's long overdue. It's long overdue, absolutely. So I'm going to click mm -hmm. stop back up here. So I guess that's, that's one thing, I guess, worth mentioning is the whole idea uh, as to whether you're going to back up strictly the data or the entire thing. Now, Vista has this uh, built in now, which is nice for backing up the data. The ability to back up the entire operating system to an image, like everything, absolutely everything on that hard drive, so that you can recover it right from that image. So everything is exactly the same way. You don't have to install the operating system, then recover the data again. Um, has been a, a functionality in, in a lot of other uh, backup utilities up to this point, notably Norton uh, Ghost. Yes. And it's good. But the, one of the big problems with that is if you're backing up the entirety of the operating system and you've already got a bug on there, you're backing up the bug as well. Right. You're backing up the virus, the Trojan. You're just basically taking a photocopy of a hard drive and exactly. Bingo. So it's it's a good way to roll out through uh, you know get one image and then roll that out through your company. So every machine is the same, but it's not uh, necessarily a good way to do it as a just a standard uh, so user now, at home. Are you a, are you a fan of uh, of Norton Ghost? I like Ghost uh, for benchmarking reasons. When I do testing of machines, I can get that machine in exactly the same state it was in before I started adding extra software or doing any testing. So that's, yeah. that's one thing that if you're planning to do a little bit of testing, doing a bit for bit copy might be useful, but paying that kind of money, I think $50 and up for a backup utility of that sort may not be worthwhile. Well, I've got a news for you. If you have a version of either Vista Ultimate or Business, there is a new utility. It's mm -hmm. like Ghost. It actually mm -hmm. takes a system image and allows you to back it up. It's called Complete PC Backup. And it's a, it's a feature for the advanced versions of Vista. Um, I've got it running here right now. And basically, you, you choose a place to put it, and mm -hmm. off you go. So that's really nice. It's sort of like it's some, so it's, for those of you that are familiar with Norton Ghost, it's kind of a built-in functionality uh, built directly into Vista Ultimate and Business. Mm -hmm. So that's, I mean, I, again, very good. I mean, Ultimate, the, the Ultimate version of Vista is a little pricey. Mm -hmm. But hey, that's what the extras are for, I guess, I suppose. Finally, I want to mention on the Vista end of things, there is a uh, product that's, uh, that sort of started in XP, uh, and they've sort of perfected it here, and that's mm -hmm. called the Windows Easy Transfer. Now, this is what this is. is kind of it takes all the settings from Windows, mm -hmm. um, and also the critical sort of uh, personal files, and you can customize it by adding data and things like that. This is designed to move, like for example, uh, uh, all your settings from Windows XP onto Windows Vista. But there's no reason why you can't take all those settings, those customizations you've done for your system, mm -hmm. um, and using it as a backup mechanism. Get the system exactly the way you want it set up exactly the way you want, and then push it out to a, uh, an easy transfer uh, version of the, the, uh, you know, this backed up somewhere else. So that if you ever have a problem, you can get all your settings back, as well as key files that you've backed up as well. Excellent. As you can see here, it's called, uh, it will back up your user accounts, folders and files, program settings, internet settings, and email settings as well. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's called uh, Windows Easy Transfer. Excellent. Fun, huh? It All right. pretty fun. For those that are still on XP, what, do, you, do you have a favorite backup software you can buy third party? No. no. Not really. I mean, backup really has been, uh, I mean, there's a product called Retrospect. Mm -hmm. And I know that Retrospect Express, for example, uh, that comes with the Mac Store uh, one-touch drives, mm -hmm. not a bad little piece of software. I'm not a huge, huge fan of it. I mean, I think it's still finicky and hard to yeah. use. But if you're stuck with it and want to do an XP backup, I'd recommend that. Yeah. Or there's a product called uh, Win Backup from Uniblue. Yeah. That as well. And I think that. That speaks to part of the problem why a lot of people don't back up. Is a lot of these programs, they're out there, they kind of work, but the amount of um, time you have to invest in figuring out how to do it and how it's to do hard. it properly, it's too hard. And by the end, most people give up and say, I don't want to have to deal with this. Right. Now, on the Mac end of things, let's talk a bit about that, because that's obviously very important. Mm -hmm. So there are a couple of utilities that are out there that uh, I'd recommend, in theory. Yes. Um, so there's, there's one that I've uh, got here called Super Duper. Is that a built-in uh, freebie? No, this, this isn't built-in. You, okay. you have to... So <laughs> built-in backup, not a strength of the, uh, the Mac OS? Not in this one, although with the next version, they're going to have something called Time Machine, yeah. which, uh, looks, uh, it, which backs up in increments as well. And you can actually... It's called Time Machine because instead of just creating one backup, it'll back up by date. So if you lost something mm -hmm. at some point, 
or you deleted it or whatever, then you can go back to a date when it still existed so on your like system. It's like a system restore on the, on the, on the Windows side of things. Right. So it'll, it'll save all of the different versions of the files through time. Right. Very good. So that, that's very nice. And that's coming now. Leopard is not necessarily going to be out until the end of the year. Yeah. They could surprise us, but we're looking probably fall time frame at this end point. Of, uh, so fall 2007. 2007. In case you're watching this uh, in 10 years' time. Yeah, at which point it's all around. Hey, look, it's the young is. version of me. <laughs> I look just the same as I always have. Um, what you do is you essentially set your copy point, um, figure out where you're going to copy from. This is, this is an all kind of thing. This will back up everything on the system. So you set where you want to copy from, in this case, my MacBook hard drive, yep. and where I want to copy to, in this case, the external uh, 120 gig uh, drive that I uh, added up using backup all files. Now, there's a couple of options for this. Um, you can back up all the files, back up the user files, just the shared users and applications, or just the shared users. And when you go into the options here as well, you can actually set up a few options here, repair the permissions first so that you aren't copying a, you know, a messed up file system. You can do a smart update, so it'll do it either all at once, every time, so that every single time you back up, it'll erase the drive and start from scratch, just lay it all back down on the ex external erase hard drive, the drive. Yeah, if, you, if you don't use the smart update. So that would be okay. just erase X120, then copy the files. But I've set it to do smart update, which will look at what you've already backed up. So the first time you do it, it'll back up everything. Okay. But then it'll look for the differences. Oh, and so then it's an incremental backup. Incremental then. backup. So, so it d does it all at once, and then it just takes the differential and it does it right. the backup now, bits that are missing now that, as add new, new data is added, correct? Exactly. Correct. So now this one right here, you actually have the smart update feature on the full paid version. Now there is a demo version that you can try that will do a backup, but that one will erase it and then write it. So you still can use it for mm -hmm. free. So you can give it a shot. Mm -hmm. and erase the backup that it's already created. Erase the backup that was already on the drive and mm -hmm. then start again from scratch. It takes a long time. But the incremental is something that is only strictly on the paid version. The paid version. Well, how much does it cost? Uh, about fifty dollars, I believe. So um, you uh, it, you got to figure out whether that's worth it. I mean, backing up this this has, this has saved my bacon on multiple occasions. So I would recommend it without hesitation, uh, even at the, the the price that they charge. And on su successful completion, it'll tell you what to do. Do you want to restart from that drive? The nice thing about this is it'll create a, a drive that's exactly the same as the drive that's inside your uh, inside your machine. Mm -hmm. So it'll boot just like it was uh, from that machine. So theoretically, you can just swap the drive right out. Oh, yeah. So if you have a problem with the one inside your machine, either Heat swap friendly. it out or boot from the external drive. Right, very good. OK, cool. Yeah. cool. Uh, and is that the only uh, backup not, utility of the Mac you recommend? It's not the only one. Uh, there's also Carbon Copy Cloner, which gets good reviews. Mm -hmm. uh, Alex Lindsay recommends that one. Mm -hmm. It has saved his bacon. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Leo actually recommends this one. Leo Laporte recommends this one. That's how I found out about this one. He's tried both of them. And, I mean, both of them are, are fairly good. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a break from backup, and we'll be back after this final word. Earlier in the show, we asked you what screencast editor can be left unsupervised and doesn't smell like feet. Is it A, a pair of sneakers, B, a Jack Russell Terrier, or C, Camtasia Studio 4? The answer is Camtasia Studio 4. Learn more at labrats.techsmith.com. Uh, during the break, we were talking about beer. Very worse. Yes, we were. Sean's hungry. See, it's summer here now, right here mm. in Toronto, and we're, uh, we're a little thirsty. Yes, I'm going to miss uh, some of Toronto's local brews. Mmm, very tasty micro brews. If you come to Toronto, definitely check it out. Amsterdam, a very delicious local brew, but all kinds, mm. of, all kinds of stuff. I'm a fan of Steam Whistle steam myself. Whistle, there you go. All right, uh, let's, we have pictures, as usual. Yeah, pictures. Oh, but here. before we get to the pictures, yes. let's talk some... Uh, about my book? No, not about your oh, book. Okay. We'll have plenty of time for that in future episodes. No, not about your stuff. Okay. About backup solutions. Yes. Okay. But there's a couple other things that were also brought up while we were talking about beer over the break, and we kept trying to push them off to the side so we could talk more about beer. But uh, there's there's online backup, and uh, oh, yeah. there's this online backup online shares. Backup. We uh, on cyberwalker.com we often point to Carbonite, which is a, not a bad little uh, backup. You know, you basically buy online storage and you get a little utility and you push 
uh, you know, files out to the, the web, so that in case your house burns down, that it's sitting on the web mm -hmm. and you're okay. The problem with the online backup, as a general rule, is that you know there's not enough space, right? You know, to back up your entire drive. So it's more for a sort of a critical kind of safety mechanism. Right, and if you're backing up 80 gigabytes worth of data, it's already slow doing that over your home network, which is reasonably fast. Mm -hmm. Try sending that over the network. Over the network that's yeah. painful. Well, that's the thing about carbon is kind of a trickle backup. You know, mm -hmm. so it's not too painful, but still, mm -hmm. you know, it's not an ideal solution. It's good, though, for, as I said, yeah. mission critical files that you really can't live without. Right, and uh, Apple has the iDisk. I think yeah, that's what Steve was iDisk. referring to yeah. earlier. So you, you've got these options that are online that you pay a monthly fee or a yearly fee for that uh, they can save your most important files at the very least. And as you said, if your house burns down, heaven forbid, uh, the one thing that you want to do, whether you're using one of these or using your disks, uh, it doesn't. Or USB. Yeah, it doesn't help to have these things in the same place as your computer is. No. Uh, and I would actually recommend as well, in addition to taking these offside, putting them in a safety deposit box or at your office or whatever, mm -hmm. um, I would also recommend if you just have a backup drive attached to your computer, if you're not going to take it offside, at the very least unplug it so that if a virus hits your machine, it doesn't hit that drive too. Oh, that's a good idea. So yeah, if you're wedding, so if you're married and you have wedding photos on your hard drive right mm -hmm. now and they're not backed up, mm -hmm. do yourself a favor, go get yourself a hundred dollar drive go buy a safety deposit box, back them up, and go put them there right now! Because otherwise you can be sleeping on the couch for the rest of your life. Indeed. Indeed. All right. Let's look at pictures. Pictures we from around the world. have pictures. Postcards. This segment's called Postcards to Lab Rats. This postcard right here, um, we made a joke, apparently, uh, yeah, I remember a few episodes things. back about if you're from space. No, we said, we said well, there's, you know, People around the world, right. and sooner or later, we're going to have somebody from space. Mm -hmm. There will be a lab rest in space kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so what happens? Calvin, Calvin. who is in the space shuttle program at NASA. <laughs> and, and he, I, I don't know whether he's actually watched lab rats from space. No, I don't uh, think, he's, think he's an engineer. Uh, we part of the engineering crew. but uh, okay. so Maybe Calvin actually staff. hasn't been in space. but uh, he's, he's been near it. He's been working with things that this have been in space. This is so cool. So thank you, Calvin. And uh, awesome. definitely, if you ever do get to space, Take lab, Take lab rats with you. That would be great. All right. And who else? We have Ali and Sonia. Oh. Um, and they are in Switzerland. Oh, very cool. Again, it, it never ceases to amaze me just how far flung some of our viewers are. Yeah. Good chocolate in, uh, in Switzerland. Yes. Mm -hmm. Bad yes, chocolate indeed. in space. Freeze dried. Yeah, it's, it's all freeze dried, yeah. yeah. It has a sort of burnt. Yeah. Taste to it. All right. Not so all right. Well, if, if you live in a, an exotic location or you do a, a wild job, Send us a picture to feedback at labrats.tv. Yes, indeed. And uh, don't forget our forums. Visit our forums at uh, labrats.tv slash forums. Oh, well, there's a link there anyway to forums. No, no, no. Sidewalker.com yeah, slash forums. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. See, this was the, the chance for you to plug yourself. Oh, yeah. Damn. Missed another golden opportunity. All right. Sidewalker.com, of course, is my tech hub website, so check that out, too. Our director's telling us to wrap. No more of that. All right. All right. Okay. That's the end uh, of uh, this edition of Lab Rats. Thank you for downloading today. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And we'll see you next time. Bye! And don't forget to back up. Really. Right. Are you ready? Padding? No, that's fine. <coughs> Say, is, is that a bishop's finger you've been sucking on? Mmm, <laughs> a tasty English beverage. Given to me by Gary Marriott for my 39th birthday. Very tasty. Oh, and you guys too, I think it was, like a, was it a group effort, wasn't it? Next one, I might even give you two bottles. That'd be nice. Hmm. Some splurge. Five, four,